So since there is no more question, we will move to the next talk, uh, which is entitled A Data Flow Oriented Hardware Design of RNS Based Polynomial Multiplication for SHE Acceleration by Joel Catebras, Alexandre Carbon, Peter Milder, Renaud Sirdet, and Nicolas Ventroux. And Joel will give the talk. Thank you. Good afternoon. Um, I'm glad to be here to be able to present the result of some work. So I will talk about uh, a data flow oriented hardware design for RNS based polynomial multiplication for SHE acceleration, SHE for somewhat homomorphic encryption. And I'm really glad that the previous talk uh, present a bit what I will discuss here. So in particular, I focus on RLWE based uh, scheme and uh, the FV scheme. So in RLWE based scheme, we have to handle uh, element of polynomial rings. And uh, in the case of homomorphic encryption, uh, those polynomials get really large because if someone wants to uh, compute a great number of uh, multiplication in the encrypted domain, uh, he wants to increase the noise gauge of the ciphertext. And to do that, he increased the size of the coefficients. But for security reasons, the degree also has to get larger. And so both the degree and the coefficient size become problematic. So one way to address the complexity of large coefficient is to use the residue number system. Um, in this representation, according to a basis of co-prime moduli, a large operation um, using uh, multi-precision arithmetic become k independent and smaller operation in modular arithmetic. So in 2016, Bajar et al. proposed a full RNS variant uh, by uh, modifying the decryption function and the multiplication and reorganization. And this year, Alevi et al. Uh, further simplified this variant. And uh, we note that the performance bottleneck is still located on the residue polynomial multiplication. And one way to address those is through the negative rapid convolution. So with negative rapid convolution, we don't need any polynomial modular reduction anymore. But this restricts the choice of the polynomial rings and also the element of the RNS basis. And in, furthermore, we have to compute a number of values which is dependent on the degree of the polynomial and the RNS basis size. So in the literature, we note that uh, there is still some trouble to define a scalable, scalable hardware approach. Because if someone wants to address the polynomial multiplication with algorithms that are less costly than the entity, we have to face some uh, asymptotic complexity issues. And if we choose the best known asymptotic approach, we have to handle those uh, tweedle factors that has an impact on the communication bandwidth with the accelerator or on the storage cost. So here we propose just a step forward in the definition of a scalable hardware approach through a data flow oriented negative rapid convolution with on the fly computation of all the tweedle factors. So our architecture principle is to compute a negative rapid convolution in a single flow with two parallel paths. The data pass uh, computes the negative rapid convolution on the polynomials by first the pre-computation phase that needs the powers of the n primitive root of minus 1. Then it performs the, uh, the forward entities, the inner product the backward entity, and finally, the post-computation that requires the, the powers of the, the invert powers of the primitive root of minus 1. And in the parallel path, we compute the, those uh, tweedle factor values. First, uh, we generate the first half of the required tweedles. 
from a greatly reduced number of seeds. Then we compute the other half of the required Tweedle factors by using the fact that psi is a primitive root of minus one, so we only need some subtractors and to reorder the sequence. And finally, we just scale the second half of the Tweedle factors by the invert of n over the considered RNS channel. So in this approach, we had two main challenges. Uh, first, it was to generate the first half of uh, the first half of the sequence of the Twiddle factors with the same throughput as the data pass. And second, a way to generate entity design that um, is RNS channel independent because we need to change the RNS channel on the flow without uh, big uh, impact on performances. So I will, in this presentation, I will only focus on the second challenge. So our starting point was a discrete Fourier transform hardware generator proposed by Peter Midler in the context of the Spiral project. So the Spiral project studies automation of hardware and software for uh, digital signal processing domain. And in particular, we were really interested in the design space exploration capability of this DFT generator. So to transpose to NTT, we first have to change the generated complex arithmetic into modular arithmetic. And for this, we made the choice to use uh, primes uh, for the RNS basis as uh, selected by the NFLE prime selection. And uh, all the modular operation, in particular multiplication, we use Barrett, uh, slightly modified Barrett modular reductions. And the second step was to modify the Tweedle factor handling. In particular, uh, this is an example of um, a fully streaming uh, PIS entity. And uh, I highlight in brown, in brown uh, all the RNS uh, channel specific values. And we had to make those uh, data paths independent of uh, the RNS channel. So what we did is that we extract all those RNA-specific elements and concatenate them into some module that we call Tweedle Bank. So, and in practice, we instantiate up to G different Tweedle Banks. So just enough to uh, reprogram one and uh, to have enough to, uh, to feed all the entity data paths. Uh, entity stage in the entity data path. So uh, each stage uh, launch a synchron uh, as uh, generate a synchronization signals over which a control module will uh, drive the interconnect from the different Twiddle banks to feed each stage of the entity. In this similar way, we are generating all the read addresses to address the memories inside the different Tweedle banks. And finally, we had to make those Tweedle banks programmable. And to do so, we instantiate a programming module that associates to a programming Tweedle flow, a program Tweedle flow, uh, a write address and a write enable signal for each memory element inside the Twiddle bank. So to do so, um, we just instantiate some counters that will extract from the programmed Twiddle flow the correct Twiddle factor for each memory element inside the Twiddle bank. So solving this and all the other issue for the negative rapid convolution in a single flow, uh, we made a first proof of concept integration to try to take into account the communication issues uh, from the host and the accelerator. So this is just a small wrapper with um, a small module 
that drive the PCIe uh, element in, on the board on which we made the experimentation. And we were really interested in the um, bandwidth that we can achieve with this module. And we are able to write on the FPGA at about 4 gigabytes per second and to read from the FPGA at about 2, 3 gigabytes per second. But it was just to check that the communication won't, won't be a major issue to fully integrate. And uh, we highlight the more constraining resource for the uh, RPM approach. But we were really interested in the question on how does this approach scale in the ACG context. So first, knowing all the different parts of our design uh, behave under the sizing parameters, we derivate, we made some projection on uh, what happens if we want to increase the degree of the different polynomials. And so we see that in this case, the BRAMs may be restrictive up to some point, and most of the BRAMs are used for entity permutations. But for a given uh, degree, we wanted to see how our design behave if we increase the parallelism, so if we increase the number of words uh, per cycle. And under this, uh, under this uh, 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 when increasing the parallelism, we have a great increase in the DSP utilization, but also the required bandwidth to fully load our accelerator is really, really huge. So it may be not the best way to improve performances. And finally, if someone wants to change the prime size element, so the element of the RNS basis, we have a, a balanced impact on DSP and BRAM utilization, but and up to some point, we may be restricted in the bandwidth available. So regarding performances, in the case study of the full RNS variant of FV, uh, we made some projection on the timing pro uh, shown by Alevi et al. this year. And what we look, it's our approach seems to be to have a speed up that is rather scalable with, um, with the increase of the parameter sets. And uh, after this acceleration, the new RPM timing is roughly 15% of the new time, so the bottleneck is now located on RNS-specific operations. And for a given parameter set, if we want to increase parallelism, we have a greatly improved speedup, but as we already saw in the previous slide, uh, the bandwidth is really restrictive, and the DSP may become uh, quickly restrictive also. And for a given parameter set, if we change the size of the RNS basis elements, we slightly improve speed up because we reduce the number of uh, operations that we have to conduct, um, the number of residue polynomial multiplication that we have to do. And this under balanced uh, DSP and BRAM usage. Um, so to conclude this work, um, I will say that for hardware implementation for SHE, we should have a flexible approach because the refinement of parameter branch is still in progress. Uh, and it seems that multiplicative depth has significant, significant impact on both the degree and the coefficient size. Our response is try to minimize the impact of the coefficient size on our hardware design by computing on the fly the twiddle factors for a negative rapid convolution. And we try to exploit the knowledge of the digital signal processing community on the DFT. The research perspective is, uh, for example, we implement a full residue polynomial multiplication, but what about implementing just an entity? 
uh, rather than the full uh, operation. And uh, what does it change? We have to also finish the proper system integration for the different uh, uh, designs that we are able to generate. And finally, made some uh, design space exploration. And uh, regarding some uh, the previous talk and other works, concomitant work on JPU acceleration for the full RNS variant, an application's perspective is to have a hybrid architecture for SHE acceleration. Thank you for your attention. If you have any question, please. Is there any question? No? So I have one question. Could you go back to the experimental slide? Yes. I, I haven't understood uh, what is the result of uh, Alevi and Hall and yours. So Alevi et Hall proposed a simplified full RNS variant. So just the operation of um, scaling uh, base extension and scaling in RNS are simplified regarding the previous work from Baja. And here, what we did is just, uh, and Alevi uh, shows by their profiling results and timing that the residue polynomial multiplication is still the biggest part. And the previous talk also shows some timing. And so what we did is just uh, propose an, uh, an hardware accelerator for the DOS polynomial multiplication. And we made this hardware independent of the RNS channel, so fully compatible with the RNS representation. OK, thank you. So if there is no, oh, there is one. I think that the performance you showed here only for the multiplications, right? It's a multiplication of two polynomials. Yeah. Since you already use the DSP, so your DSP can use the to generate Gaussian noise, which is requested by uh, somehow homomorphic or your own diverse fully homomorphic. So have you uh, already thought about this, already implemented, or haven't done that no. yet? I haven't done that yet. Oh. I, yeah, because the DSP already has that part. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. OK, second question, because you see your level up to 30 level, which means you do uh, 30 multiplications for the polynomials, right? So your level L from one, one basically, you do not do homomorphic. You just do one yeah, homomorphic. For the, so the you're level. up to level 30, then, but your bandwidth, you see, it's a constant. So I don't know how this criterion comes out. So whatever you do, level 1, level 5, or up to level 30, they do not change. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't think I understand the question. Oh, question is, for example, your L basically yeah. is how many multiplications? So, yeah, uh, L okay. is the number of ciphertext multiplication that we yeah. are able to do. Yeah, the uh, however, your bandwidth the, is no. constant. Yeah, the bandwidth usage is just a uh, uh, function of the parameters of the hardware accelerator. Because our hardware uh, accelerator is a fully streaming flow, so the the bandwidth usage. So if we want to increase the size of the entity, we just add one stage mm -hmm. with the same number of cycle of uh, word per cycle that we, uh, we take in input and in output. So the, the purpose of such uh, hardware data flow is to have a given throughput, uh, okay. a fixed throughput of a different polynomial multiplication. And to achieve this throughput, we just need to have W uh, words mm -hmm. per cycle. So the required bandwidth is just the frequency multiplied by the number of words and the size of the words we require. Okay. 
what? Okay, I, I still have some concern. Maybe we can discuss. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Thank you okay, very thank much. Thank you. Thank you. So, if there is no more question, let's thank Joel and all the speakers of the session. Thank you.